Hello everyone, welcome back to another Griff Friday podcast. Now today on the show we've got Russell Osman. Okay, it's a big show today, so smash that like button. Do subscribe to the channel because we are 50 away now from 14,000 subscribers. We've got the boys with us tonight. I'm not sure Russell knows, but we've got all my mates. We've all got questions for him. If anyone else has any questions, get them in the comments and we will try and answer all of them. All right, so we're going to get in Ramondo. Hello, Hello, mate. How are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to speak to the main man tonight. It's going to yes, be good. Um, and we've got Jason. Hello, mate. He's here. We've got Coxie. Hello. And we've got Harvey. How are we doing, boys? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Good. We're all good. Right, we're going to crack on, boys. We're going to get in. Russell Osman. Everyone, get your comments in. Um... Because this man is a legend. He's <laughs> played for England. He's played for which He's played for loads of different teams. Let's have a chat with him. It's the man, Russell Osman. How are you doing, Russell? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? Yeah, very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. We're all good. We're all good. Good. So, Russell, we're going to start off. Okay. How how have you been today? Actually, how, what have you been up to today? Uh, I've been dog walking, done a bit of shopping. Um, a few essentials had to be picked up. Um, Apart from that, it's just been a pretty quiet day. We've got one or two things going on that I have to get in order. Um, cool. Phone calls to make. Uh, yeah. All been pretty busy, really. Nice. Right. Definitely. We'll start off then with the show. Um, give us a brief overview of your football career and how football came into your life. How football came into my life? Well, my father yeah. was a professional footballer. He played for Derby County back in the 50s. Um. And I grew up, I had uh, four brothers and a sister. So uh, my, my older brother, myself, used to spend a lot of time kicking the ball about. Uh, we grew up in a public house, so we had a nice car park there that was, um, you know, a decent enough area. In fact, it's, you know, crossing and heading and volleys the, the side walls, stuff like that. And I started playing for a local side there uh, called Repton Casuals. Um, mm -hmm. Had a great manager, big handlebar moustache. Well, thank Bastard, he senior side. And he also started a junior side, starting at about under eight, under nine. Uh, and me and Matt, um, we played for the under eights, the tens, then went into the elevens, all the way up to under fifteens. Oh, wow. Nice. Right. So, um, I was going to ask a question. Oh. And then, really, uh, how's the grammar school? Go on. He's... Yeah, go on, Jason. Yeah, he's alright. Sorry, I kept, I kept cutting out a little bit. Sorry. Um, so, I'll come to a question as well. Oh, he's um, gone. I think his wife. I think his wife is gone. <laughs> oh, <is that? laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll wait for him to it come just... back. It just I'm kept sure cutting out, so I didn't know yeah, what was going on. I think, yeah, his Wi-Fi cut. We'll wait for him to come back. Uh, in the meantime, we'll, we'll we'll try and get some more people in. I'm going to just promote it on my Instagram quickly. He's, he's back, so we'll get him straight back in. And he might carry on with what he was saying. Um, but yeah, we'll just wait for him to come back. I'm not sure what his, his Wi-Fi he might be playing up, but we'll get him back in. All right, he's back. He's back in the game. <laughs> yeah, are we back, lads? Yeah, we're yeah, all good. Yeah, we're back, yeah. 
Sorry about that. I lost you there for some reason. <laughs> You're right. I think you're breaking up a little bit, so but we, we should be. I was about 15 or 16. I just did local football. Local football, yeah. It's quite bad. After that, grammar school playing rugby. I played rugby till I was 16. Did school and um, ended up being rugby. scouted by Ipswich and went to Ipswich. Wow. Wait, 16 years, 16 years old? Wow. It's a tough sport. <laughs> there you go. So, so um, I was 16, I played rugby on a Saturday, football on a Sunday. Cool. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's some serious sport. <laughs> 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 um, so, how come you didn't go into a uh, management career then? When obviously you retired from football, he's breaking up, isn't he? I managed uh, for a short while at Bristol City. Can you hear me? Okay. It's yeah, it's, it's very it's, it's breaking, breaking up, up quite a bit. Yeah, Bristol yeah. City while Cardiff City. I'll be there. I'm going to go out and come back in again. <laughs> <laughs> How are we doing? Are we there? You just yeah, yeah. I think you br- yeah, you might be all right. Yeah, I got the card of City in the Bristol. Is it the Brist- Bristol City as well? Man, I think he's gone. Mm. Yeah, I managed Bristol City for a while. Um, a car. City for sort of caretaker posts. Um, yeah. One at Plymouth and one at Bristol Rovers. And then uh, I went back to Ipswich and worked in the academy for a while. Oh, okay. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Rwondo? Yeah, uh, I've got a question for you, uh, Russell. So, so, really, I've done a little bit of everything. I've played, I've managed, I've coached, I've scouted, I, I been on the recruitment side of an agency and I've mm. commentated. Commentated? Commentating. Wow. Cool. Wow. That's decent going there. Pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, I worked for Eurosport for about 20 years. Wow. Uh, You're a pundit in the Indian Super League. Uh, is that right? Yeah, I think I saw him on there actually. The Indian Super League, yeah. Um, went I went to India for the first time about fourteen years ago, and the common. Oh mate! Oh, 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 oh my god! <laughs> Has it gone to plan, boys? Oh my! I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a message. I'm gonna say, try and go closer to your wife. Or I don't know. This isn't how it should be going. But um, yeah. Yeah. we'll wait for him to come back in. That's yes, right. I'm gonna just, I'll just, I'll just pop him a message quickly. Hang on. <laughs> He's back. Um, hey. we're getting back in. It's just, yeah. He's, he's very laggy. I'm not sure why, but might have, we might have issues with his Wi-Fi or something. Anyway, um, right. He's back. We'll get him in again. Third time lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Are we in? He, I think I think he's going to go close, right, right. closer to his Wi-Fi. Maybe you... I'm right on top of it. Can't get any closer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 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 right. Here we go. Where were we at? Where were we at? I think it was Ramondo. Indian, asked, Indian, wasn't it? The, no, I think Indian. probably asked about yeah. the Indian Premier League or something. Super yeah. League, yeah. That's it. Right, we go. We'll go again. Right, Harvey. Yeah, so I was just asking about how um, being a pundit in the Indian Super League is and how you found it. Yeah, the Indian Super. I went. <laughs> yeah, pretty hard work. You know, when it's hundred degrees a day and you're travelling all around India, it's. Uh, 
first couple of years were very difficult. But uh, the last few years, I didn't, do, I didn't go this year because, because of the coronavirus mm. problems out there and here. Sure. And having to isolate and work out of a bubble. I didn't fancy doing that. Final, actually, for this year is tomorrow. Uh, in Mumbai, um, Mumbai against K. Mohan began. So, okay, should be wow. a, a cracking game. So, if you, if you do get the opportunity to, to watch it at all, you'll be in for a yeah. treat. How, how does the standard of and football it's, it's compare coming on, to... It's coming on um, bit by bit. It's getting better every year. You know, quite... Mm. Harvey, go on. What were you saying? I was going to say, how does the... The standard um, is really good. Like I was yeah. just saying, it's getting better all the time. Um, they they started off by having... Is there. Standard's mm. good. Like I say, getting better. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Mm. I've, uh, I've got a question for you, Russell. Um, I don't know if you can hear me all right, um, but I'm just going to say, so Bobby yeah. Robson uh, you obviously managed you um, when you played for Ipswich. Um, he obviously declared his team back in the day with all the players like yourself and all, all the other greats who played at the time. It was the best team that I ever put together. What was it like to be managed by Sir Bobby Robson in the glory years of this football club? Yeah. Can you hear me? That might be a bit delayed. So, yeah. what was the question? Did you quite hear, did you hear everything, or did you did not quite hear everything? No, I'll say I didn't again. hear the question. Yeah, that's right. I'll, I'll go again then. Um, so you got you were managed by some the question. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Uh, so, <laughs> Sir Bobby Robson uh, managed you. Yeah. In your career, when you played for Ipswich, he he named basically yourself and all the other players, included all the greats who played for us, uh, as it was the best team that I ever put together. Uh, what was it like to be managed by Sir Bobby Robson in the glory years of this football club? Well, it was uh, one an honour to be managed by him. Um, he gave me my opportunity in the first place, uh, so I will be forever thankful for that. Um, the unique way that he managed it was pretty straightforward. It didn't complicate anything. It was be as good as the, the basics that you can possibly be. And what he did, he picked players that could play alongside each other, you know, as a... Yeah team individually we might not have been the best individuals to ever kick a football but together we were quite as strong and we all knitted together very well yeah definitely yeah mm. it showed because we won the UEFA Cup with you with you being in the squad at the time as well so we we were, we were winning quite a lot of things and we were very close to winning the league as well in 81 as well so we could have, we could have done a double that year but, um, you know, you could say it was probably the best time to be playing for Ipswich at that point when you had someone as good as him managing our football club. And obviously, you know, for what he went on to go and do after that, you know, he everything which Bobby, Sir Bobby Robson done in his career pretty much was to a, to a peak, to, to the best it was probably as. And everyone talks about him still. So, yeah, I think, like I say, anyone playing under him was probably, it was probably an honour, really, weren't it, to be playing under him. And you also played for England as well. I mean... Was he was he actually manager of he, he let you have the opportunity for England as well, didn't he, at the time? Because he, he went on after us to go and manage England, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> He's literally frozen, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, so. he left Ipswich to go and manage England mm -hmm. and yeah. he was uh, the England manager. Um when I got up, there I am. The chaps Sorry, is struggling. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really you're breaking it's, up. It's, it's breaking it's up, struggling mate. quite bad. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I'll come out of it. I'll try and 
different. I think you said he's going to come out of it and try again. Yeah. 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 I'll come out of it again, okay? Yeah, okay. that's fine. No worries. no worries. No worries, mate. Okay, we'll get him out for a sec. That's a shame, man. Real shame that it's not yeah, flowing yeah. because of the internet, I know. You know? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> I suppose, I suppose if it's like a few of you in your household, like the Wi-Fi, mm. if it's not picking up the right um, in and out, spe isn't it? The yeah. speed, then it's going to... Mm. Yeah. But we'll That's see. a good question so far, to be fair, though. Yeah. Has he, has, he come com has he come completely out, Griff? No, he's backstage, but he's frozen on his thingy. So, yeah. I'm not being funny, but what? why are people hating on the comments already? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll wait for Russell to come back. Um, right. Whilst whilst we are waiting, remember to smash that like button, people. And um, yeah, That's keep good. subscribing because right. we are on the road to 14k. He's just dropped out. It's a real shame, really, because if he wasn't, if it, if he wasn't, we've got some really good questions for him, and I think you know he's got his. Given I'd love to love answers. to hear the answers properly. Yeah. 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 Oh, as well. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. That or we'll have to pre-record it maybe next time or something like that. I don't know. I might, I might, I might suggest. Yeah. See what if, if if it comes if he comes in again and it starts to lag, then we're gonna have to rearrange it. I reckon. Yeah, yeah, pre-record yeah. it. Yeah, because because we want to ask these questions with uh, of a of a flowing answers, like rather than yeah. keep stop starting and like him yeah. to like not hear the questions, etc. Hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Um. Anyway. Right, whilst we're waiting for him to come back, what we'll do is that we'll, we'll get everyone in the comments to ask a question for Russell and uh, we'll come on if to them. If it's time. We'll, if we'll, yeah, we'll, like I said, we'll, we'll come on to them if we can. I want to see some people asking some questions now for when he does return, when he does yeah. come back. His wife, I don't know. He was like sat right, right next to his Wi Fi, so I don't know why he's is he, that, is, he, is he living in England? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, think so. I think it so, is, yeah. Yeah. I reckon it's probably countryside, I reckon it's quite bad usually. It could, isn't it? It could be, yeah. Wind as well yeah. might, might affect mm. it. Yeah, that's another thing as well. Yeah. yeah. Rain. Yeah, definitely. Someone said yeah. school. But tomorrow. we're leaving that till the game tomorrow, aren't we, boys? We'll leave that till tomorrow. Alfie, we've yeah. got a big we've got a big we've got a big stream lined up tomorrow. We've got Plymouth versus it well, Ipswich versus Plymouth. And uh, yeah, right, Russell is back. Hopefully it might be a little <laughs> better, we'll see. Right, we're Hopefully. getting back in now. Right, he's here. Yeah. Is that any better? Much yeah, better. That, much that sounds better. perfect. That's right, brilliant. Sorry about that, guys. Probably my end. That's fine. <laughs> You're all right. You're worried. fine, mate. You're fine. Shall we? Shall uh, we just start again? Like from what? Where was? Well, I think we should just carry on from where we left off. All right. Yeah. He's, he's quite busy. He's going to be. So busy. I think. I think yeah. what I said was. I'm I think do what the, uh, whatever you want, lads. Don't mind. Yeah, time again. <laughs> yeah. I'm just. Um, so I think I mentioned about the fact that you you meant. So we talked about Sir Bobby Robson, obviously, because he gave you your chance to play in as for Ipswich Town, obviously, and you were yeah. you started your career Ipswich as well, which is amazing, really, to be you know one of our own. Uh, but I was going to say basically, like, um, did he give you the opportunity to play for England as well then? Because obviously he became manager of England in '82, didn't he? After he finished with Ipswich, Ron Greenwood was the manager. Oh, Ron Greenwood. Was it Ron Greenwood? Was it to Bobby? Um, yeah. So I right. got my. Uh, international debut uh, through Ron Greenwood. Um, right. I was out yeah. in Australia when I think Bobby Robson was what they called the, the B team manager then. Um, oh, yeah. So I got chosen by uh, Ron Greenwood. Then Sir Bobby took over and Sir Bobby was in charge when I got my last cap. Ah, uh, so yeah. Then he, then he yeah. stopped playing me for some reason. <laughs> yeah, why not? Wow. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so you you made two hundred and ninety four appearances for Ipswich. Um what was your your best and your worst memory Ipswich? <laughs> <laughs> My best memory was obviously picking up the UEFA Cup. Yeah, I understand. Um and in a way one of the worst memories was that um second leg of the final of the UEFA Cup because we went with a healthy yeah. lead. We yeah, got an early yeah. goal and then we got bombarded for the next, you know, 75 minutes by AZ Alkmaar, who were a very, very strong unit. And the fact that they could just throw caution to the wind, it made 
that last sort of half an hour of the game, oh, it seemed to go on forever. And every yeah, decision yeah. seemed to go yeah. their way. They, they got every break possible. And we were hanging on a little bit at the end, but, you know, we, we managed it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think yeah. if, it, if it had gone on another 10 minutes, I think they might have got an equaliser and then, you know, who knows what would have happened after that. But yeah. that was uh, yeah. that was one of the hardest and toughest sort of half an hour as I have as a as an Ipswich player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um I saw a tweet from yourself, Russell, I believe the other day. I think it was uh if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, it was a photo a photo of Alan Hunter and I think you yeah. were saying how much you owe to the man and what a legend he was, etc. You know, you played with a lot of unreal talent players, you know. Um Alan Hunter himself was that was that one that stood out for you in the team? Not oh, very much so. Uh as a young lad when I first got involved in and around like the first team squad, Alan was definitely somebody you looked up to, you know, and uh, if he told you to do something, by crikey, you did it, you know. <laughs> he used to win practice matches, he'd chase people like Keith Burton into the back of the goal net, you know, and start throwing punches at him before <laughs> you could caught him, you know, in a challenge or something. But Alan was a was and still is a very, very genuine man. He's mm. took his old boots, uh, a, a, a wonderful character. And he actually said to me one day after a game, well played. And I must have played maybe a hundred games alongside Alan. <laughs> <laughs> on, one occasion, on one occasion, one occasion only, he said well played to me. So I must have had a, you know, a, a, a blinding game. Yeah. But every morning that we turned up for training, we turn up at Portman Road because we used to train at the side of Portman Road. You know where the yes yeah. yeah. pitch is there. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. And I used to park my car, walk past the groundsman, sort and any time from sort of quarter to nine to quarter to ten, Alan Hunter and Kevin Beatty would be sitting in there with the groundsman, smoking <laughs> a fag, having a mug of tea. <laughs> reading the newspapers wow. you know, that just, that's how it was you know yeah, yeah. Wow. quarter to ten they'd you know put the cigarette out and you know pull out the the tea cups and everything and wandering and do a day's training sounds then, so relaxed yeah and a lot of times <laughs> after, there's a great picture that i might have posted on on one of the social media sites that when um i think it was when Ipswich beat West Brom at Highbury uh, yeah. in the seventh final of the FA Cup. There was, I think it was Paul Manor, Kevin Beattie, Alan Hunter and Sir Bobby sitting in the corner, you know, different, obviously Sir Bobby's still got his suit on. Mm. Uh, Alan's just in his shirt and shorts, I think. Paul's only got his shorts on, Kevin's sitting there. I think Kev's got a, a, a can of beer. <laughs> Alan's got a cigarette on and... Uh, and a drink. So Bobby's got a, a glass of scotch and and Paul's got a alcoholic drink of some sort. And that was it. It was just it was a working class game in those days. And they were very much working class people, you know, mm -hmm. salt of the earth people. You know, so Bobby used to talk about you know the colliery workers, the the miners up in the northeast. You know, Alan, you know, his background in Ireland and obviously Kevin's, you know, a tough upbringing uh, up north as well in Carlisle. Paul was from yeah. Chorley. Um, so all ended up a little bit further south. And it's strange that you've got people from all those different areas that were actually sitting in the corner of uh, a hybrid changing room with marble floors and under underfloor heating, you know. Wow. So, um, but Alan... When I left Leicester City in 85, it was under a little bit of acrimonious circumstances because I didn't particularly want to leave. The, the club had got financial problems at the time and it was just time to sell the next player. And I just happened to be the next one on the list. Yeah. Um, I was a little bit annoyed about it. And when I joined Leicester City, I'd been there probably about a month and I got a letter in the post handwritten letter which is very strange you wouldn't even see one of those these days um and it was from 
Allen from Allen Hunter. Got great handwriting, best handwriting I've ever ever seen from a centre half. And um, <laughs> it was a, just a, a little message from him just to say, listen, you know, you've got to uh, forget what happened at Ipswich, just move forward. Um, don't look over your shoulder. You know, it wasn't your fault that you, you left. It was just circumstances that, that happen now and again. Make the most of your, your move to Leicester and enjoy the rest of your career. You know, but to get that from, from Alan, mm. it was... Um, Something special. You know, that's the mark of the man, really. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Right, oh, Russell. Really um, I've got to bring this up. My mum's watching. And I obviously, we had a call last week. She's got a little question <laughs> for you here. Hi, mum. School girl crush. Oh, <laughs> anyway, Russell. I'm not, um, I'm not going there on that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Um, look, Russell, in your football career, you played for Leicester, Southampton, Bristol City, Brighton and Cardiff, as well as Ipswich. Yeah. What I want to know is what's what was your favourite club to play for and what was your most memorable match? Is this your mum's question? This is my question. <laughs> oh, <your question. laughs> um, I enjoyed playing for all the clubs I played at. Mm. Obviously, to spend 10 years at Ipswich was, um, was the highlight for me. The whole 10 years I thoroughly enjoyed. You know, probably 11 years because I really started as a schoolboy and we won the um, the FA Youth Cup whilst I was yeah. still a schoolboy. So um, I had 11 great years uh, of involvement with the football club. Um, some of the best games, I remember we played Barcelona a couple of times at home. I think we beat them twice as well at home. Yeah, you did. Nice. Um, and obviously, we played them in the return leg over the New Camp Stadium, and we played pre-season tournament there. I think the European ventures were the favourite part of playing at Ipswich for me. You know, it was it was becoming a a habit to play a lot of games every season. It was uh, becoming a habit to to travel around Europe, and uh, not only that, travel with Ipswich. All around the world, we ended up in Hawaii at the end of the season, um, Vancouver, Toronto, uh, Florida was a regular vacation, you know, and that was back in the late 70s, early 80s, you know, before mm. clubs were clearing off to Dubai, you know, every other weekend. So my time at Ipswich was quite eye opening, really, not only from the football yeah. point of view, but but it's sort of. Um, Developing you as a mature traveller, really. <laughs> mm. Wow. Mm. So, going back to the greatest film of all time, The Escape to Victory. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I want to ask a question on that. How did it feel um, working with the likes of Pele, or playing with Pele, I should say, um, and other characters like Sylvester Stallone and people like that? Was it an eye-opener as well, or not, like something? Cherish. Well, I think Pelly enjoyed playing alongside me. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, it was fantastic. It, it, it was a unique opportunity, mm. you know, and it, it came around through Bobby Robson. Um, we'd had a, a long season, successful season, and he threw the question open to everybody that if you wanted to be involved in the making of a film um, in the summer, it's in Budapest in Hungary, um, he would grant permission. So I was still single at the time. Uh, so off I shot, I've got nothing else to do. So I thought I might as well go and earn six weeks wages, playing a bit more football in the background um, for this prisoner of war film. And that is, is about as much um, as we knew about the, the project. Uh, later on, we found out that Pelly was involved with it and Bobby Moore and Mike Summerby and Ozzy Ardiles and uh, Casimir Dana, Paul Van Hims, Co Prince, um, Albert Torrenson, um, 
you know, and then one or two of the other Ipswich lads were going as well. Yeah. Uh, mm. And it was a great, a great, great time. We had so five weeks in Budapest. We were, a lot of us would go out to eat in different hotels or restaurants every night. And that might include Pelly, Bobby Moore, Mike Summerby, Ozzy Ardiles. Ozzy used to like a Benson and Hedges in a gin and tonic in those days. <laughs> <laughs> Pelly, he would come along with his manager and his manager would bring his guitar along as well. So oh, half wow. through dinner, Pelly would get the guitar out and strum along and sing it. So it's crap singer, but, you know, it wasn't bad on <laughs> <laughs> And he would have a bottle of Johnny Walker Black Label. Okay, yeah. To himself on the table. And wow. he'd just have a tumbler and he'd put maybe a quarter of an inch in the bottom of the glass and have a little sip through dinner. Little sing song, play the guitar, little bite to eat, little sip. And by the end of the evening, the bottle would be empty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that was a regular occurrence. Not every day of the week, but possibly every other day of the week. Yeah, and then the following day, up bright and early, we were on site. I suppose every day we we're on duty. We we're on site by seven o'clock in the morning. Get your army gear on. Get your army boots on. And you know how everybody plays rondos, like piggy in the middle, and yeah, yeah, my nice and warm up practice. Quality. That's a quality game. Yeah, we were doing that sort of, you know, before the filming started, breaks in filming, mm -hmm. and. and when you get stuck in the middle of a circle and on the outside you've got our dealers and Pelly and Bobby Moore and people like that. <laughs> I could be in the middle for a long time. Wow. Long time. <laughs> so you learn very quickly, even with your army boots on, that you better develop a decent touch. Otherwise, you are going to be sat in the middle and you're never going to get out. So, wow. Well, that sort of thing. It was very... Uh, it was good fun. It was yeah. great. Yeah. The yeah. was a different sort of character. He took one of the two things a little bit too seriously. He tried to wrestle Kevin Beatty, arm wrestle Kevin Beatty. Wow. Wow. He must have been must have been mad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who's, who's going to try and do something as stupid as that? Like, yeah, that's crazy. You know? <laughs> and he's already done Rocky. So, yeah, he's yeah. got a good physique on him. But, you know, Kevin Beatty's not called the monster for, for nothing. No, you know, no. and he he wanted to wrestle him, arm wrestle him right handed, you know. So Kevin's okay, so great. Kevin smashes him down, and uh, <laughs> then he wants to take him on left handed, <laughs> realizing that Kevin is left handed, you know. And then Kevin just knocked him over as easy as anything. Oh my god! <laughs> and then That's just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> It must have been extra special, um, obviously beating the guards at the same time as well then in the football match. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I missed that. It must have been extra special um, defeating the guards in the football match itself. Yeah, it was um, It was all good fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got a question now. Um, so, so in terms of like the dressing room and all the players, who, um, who was the best player in terms of when you were there for, for all your time, obviously, within your career at Ipswich? Who was the best player in terms of motivating and getting everyone pumped up before a game? Mm. I mean, it could be a few individuals because I know a few obviously went uh, through the through your time at Ipswich. But who who specifically would you say would be up there as being quite? A um, I would say first and foremost, Paul Mariner. Paul Mariner. Yeah, yeah. Good and let's, let's, let's wish him well because he's he's not, yeah. very, not very well indeed at the moment. So yeah. oh, well, wish, wish him well then with him. Mm. Um, and I think through Paul, he sort of encouraged people like Terry Butcher to show his emotions a little bit more before yeah. before the games. And um, Terry uh, developed into a great motivator you know mentor for the players uh, around him and when you've got those two in the side really there isn't any room for anybody else because you're never going to yeah. get a word in anyway you yeah, know? yeah. Mm. how did you come alongside obviously terry butcher though like because you guys had a good partnership didn't you at the back for it switch yeah time. he was a noisy one i was a quiet one <laughs> <You know? laughs> we were talking the other night you know we were just lucky in that we developed a good understanding, we got in the side roughly uh, 
the same side at the same time i was probably six months ahead of terry yeah um i could play left or right i could play left or left center half or left back um you know and he was a he was a nice quiet lad when it came to the football club you know once he'd been there a few weeks he was told that he needs to toughen up and uh crikey didn't he just so, yeah 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 definitely good character so great motivator uh and paul bless him he was one of the best center forwards i ever played with paul wow. he was brave uh he would never shirk responsibility um he used to say to me if i hadn't got a pass on just hit it in his direction and he will make the best out of it that he can and if that meant yeah. chasing a hopeless ball uh that i missed it missed him by 40 yards he would chase it down right. and see if he could make something out of it you know you don't see many players like that now do you no you don't you know they stand there and you know Mind you, what they do now, they all stick the thumb up, you know, when somebody yeah. passes 20 yards into it. Yeah. And they go, oh, <laughs> cheers, mate. Oh, go on, you saw me. Good ball, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite make it. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think football, like, in the past is nothing like these days, as you say. And um, Tone's yeah. asked that in the comments as well, actually. So, it says it here. Oh, okay. What would you say the main differences in the games, well, now, what's different now compared to when you were playing? I think oh, where do you want to start? Let's start from the yeah. ground up. The pitches, the boots, the footballs, the equipment, the medical attention, the training, the training grounds, mm. the travel, yeah. the money. Yeah. Yeah. Everything. Not, there, is, there is a lot. Everything's a lot. changed. Well, the referees have changed. VAR. You guys tell me about VAR. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to go to Stockley Park first and get this checked out before you answer this. What is that all about? It's ruining the game. It yeah. is. An oh, absolute... yeah. We've got no supporters in the, the stadium as it is. No. Mm -hmm. And we all sit there watching the television and there's a goal scored. The commentators don't even commentate properly on it now because they're not sure if it's going to be allowed or not. Yeah. And then you have That's this delay, true. confusion, delay more confusion goal is given or not given yeah and it's like oh okay move on yeah and that's imagine what it's going to be like when the stadiums have people in there again yeah. supporters yeah. in there and maybe 10 yeah. 20 30 40 60 000, and yeah. they're all going <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah when is the decision going to be made <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm just relieved that we haven't got in our league to be honest because i just yeah. couldn't stand it if it was us having mm. beefing no. through that but yeah in my opinion it's only my opinion yeah the people in stockley park are referees mm. yeah so it's one yep. referee judging what another referee's doing yeah yeah which makes you know no doesn't sense any, no it doesn't make any sense no in the old days referees would make some good decisions and some bad decisions. Some decisions would go for your side and some decisions would go against your side. VAR, some decisions go for you, some go against you. So what's the difference? Yeah, there's no what difference. What is the difference? Yeah. Okay, goal line yeah. technology, mm. when it works, yeah. is worth it. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. But with between what they've done with VAR, the handball rule, the offside rule. Oh, give me. It's just the list is endless, we, isn't it? Yeah, we can't even have an independent timekeeper. <laughs> Basketball, rugby, mm. uh, American football, <laughs> hockey. Just about everybody else has an independent timekeeper. Yep. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Take that away from the referee so that all he has to do is referee from start to when he hears the clacks and go in the crowd. Yep. Yeah. Mm. yeah. There you go. Exactly that. I do agree with you. Stop, 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 start, stop, start. Mm. 10 yeah. seconds for this, 10 seconds for that. How many substitutes have been in? Getting lambasted by the players because he's not allowed enough time at the end of each half. And, you know, are you going to stop your watch? He's time wasted. Just mm. let an independent person in the stadium be in charge 
of telling the referee when to kick off, when it's half time, when to kick off again for the second half, and when the game's over. Yeah, easy. 100%. We I can't even when, do that. When it stops starting, I think it takes excitement out of the game as well. Oh, 100%. Well, I, you know, there's no excitement left in the game, really. Well, is no, this, yeah, this is it, yeah. Mm. You know, we mentioned that the other night. You know, we, we, we're talking about, and Terry and myself did, did this similar sort of thing for the disabled supporters of the football club. And what we've ended up with, in my opinion, is not a very good product. Mm. And the people that are buying the product to sell to the consumer, the customer, the supporters, is not supplying a very good product. Yeah. Mm. Because it's getting boring. Yeah. If you watch um, academy football, it's boring. Mm -hmm. The elite player performance program, which is telling clubs how to coach their academy kids, you're all doing this the same way. Keep possession of the ball. That doesn't yeah. necessarily guarantee your goals. You can have possession of the ball for 90 minutes in your own half. You ain't going to score a goal, are you? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. You know, so if you're a big old-fashioned centre forward, you're going to be sitting there scratching your backside all day because you ain't going to get a kick of the ball these days. Mm. Nope. So, mm. you know, so where do we start? Where do we stop? How do we make the game better? Yeah. Mm. You know, you can... You've taken the physical element out of the game. You know, there used to be an in, um, an intimidation element to football when I played. Because somebody would smack you around the ear in the first couple of minutes. And, you know, if you, if you didn't like it, that was you done for the day. Yeah. You could get as good as you got. You know, and that was down to learning the trade, playing in the combination league when it was a proper reserve team football match. Wow. Mm. Yeah, you know, and at 16, 17, 18 years old, you were playing against men, and by 18, 19, if you weren't in the first team, you thought you'd missed the boat, which you probably had. Wow. Now, academy football is under 23. Yeah, imagine being yeah. 23 years old and still playing academy football. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. By that time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Only my with, opinion. With regards to like. I'm going to say regards to obviously the footballs these days compared to the leather balls back in those days, I'm assuming the leather balls when they get wet are really hard and just like, well, hard to kick and use, I'd say maybe, or? Well, we've got, we've got this whole dementia campaign going on, haven't we? You know, and my ex-manager, Chris Nichols, suffers very badly from, uh, from dementia. Um, Dave Watson, who I played with alongside uh, uh, England. Um, again, I think that's been on the news today. You know, he's struggled with dementia. Uh, going back to Jeff Hassel, players before that, Jackie Stamp, who used to play for Derby County, he used to drink in my dad's pub. And Jackie was blind, you know, and Jackie used to head the, head the balls in the, the, you know, the very late 40s, 50s that were, twice as heavy as the ones we used, which were twice as heavy as the ones that they're playing with nowadays. So, wow. There were days when you'd head the ball and catch it slightly wrong if it was a bit wet and cold and, oh, and literally you did have stars in front of your eyes for a few minutes. But I can imagine. That was it. You, you just got on with it. And you, you had head in practice when I played Chris Nichol at Southampton. So every Friday after training, it was a case of having sort of 50 headers practicing, trying to head the ball from the edge of your 18 yard box back up to the halfway line. Sure. Mm. And you imagine you do that every week and you get a few of those wrong, that rattles yeah. your brains a bit. <laughs> yeah. Definitely, so, yeah. So, um, Stella, anyway, say it again. Oh, How's the Stella? Who's on the Stella in the bottom corner? That's oh, <laughs> Harvey loves it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Russ, good, Russell, Russell. It's good, it's good drink. What, what's your, what's your favourite alcoholic drink, Russell? <laughs> um, these days I like a glass of wine, red wine. Nice. Uh, I like yeah. Italian red wine. Uh, I do like a a bottle of Stella. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm having a beer. Drink to that um, one. And I do like a gin and tonic. 
Very oh, good choices. Go. What about a vod vodka orange? Uh, I've got a few stories. Got a few stories about vodka orange, but oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Go on, Coxie. Okay, right. I'll ask a question. Um, do, do you think Ipswich can go up to the championship this season? No. We're not good enough. There we no, go. We're, we're not at the moment. And the reason I say that is because I think it will take. Paul Cook too long mm -hmm. to short uh, his best squad of 18 players mm. out of the 47 pros that they've got down there. Yeah. Um, I think some players will uh, have a false dawn. They'll play well for him initially and then they will plateau off. Some might not impress him to start with, but might get better the, the, the longer they work with him. That will take time. Mm. Um, we have a problem scoring goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, Norwood's got a couple lately, but Norwood was brought to the club to score lots of goals, 20 odd goals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He has only ever scored league goals in one season when he was at Tranmere. Yeah, yeah. All his other goals were non-league. Yeah. So, yeah. we bought a player there who's had one season of scoring goals in league football. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so don't tell me that, you know, you can have an eight-year, ten-year career that suddenly because you've played league football for one year and got a lot of goals, that gets you a move to Ipswich Town. Yeah. I think there's got to be a little bit more to your game than that. You know, and I'm not just yeah. digging him out because he has tried recently and he's got, he's got a couple of goals recently. You know, he can score. Yeah. yeah. But I think we we put a lot of emphasis uh, on him to be a 25-goal-a-year man at Ipswich. Yeah. Like he probably yeah. was at Chamere. Definitely. But that was in the fourth division, the fourth division, you know, up, division yeah. League Two, yeah. whatever you yeah. want to call it. <laughs> so to step up and expect him to do the same again, quite an ask. It was a tough, it was a tough ask. Yeah. It's a yeah. different yeah. standard of football that he's used to. Defenders are a little bit better, mm. you know. And if we're saying that we want him to lead the line, if we get promotion back into the championship, then again, the defenders are going to be even. Better there, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not saying he couldn't do it, but I'm saying there was a massive emphasis on him being the focal point, uh, and he's picked up a couple of injuries, and it's just not, it's not worked for, yeah. the, for the club. They've not found a combination of the right person to play alongside him, and it all comes yeah. down at the end of the day to scoring. Anything between 75 and 90 goals a season as a team to get promotion. Yeah. 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 You ain't going to get promotion scoring 60 goals. Yeah. I agree. So, Russell, if it's not this season, when do you think it will be? Mm -hmm. That all depends on um, what's happening in the background of the club. Yeah. 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 Can, you don't, obviously, you don't have to answer this question, but what is your whole opinion on the the takeover talk? Um, I would like to see the takeover happen, mm -hmm. if it is possible. Um, nothing against Marcus personally, but I just think we need somebody with fresh ideas and a fresh um, outlook on what is needed to make the club successful again. Yeah. And I think we have to get back to saying if we produce good young players to our academy then they have to have a path to follow into the first team yeah. not yeah. into the under 23s in the academy and then out on loan and then sold mm -hmm. there must be a clear pathway mm -hmm. from the academy into the first team mm. Now, yeah. that's not going to happen if you've got 40-odd professionals at the club. 
Mm. Yeah. So we need somebody yeah. to come in and take over and and which I say no disrespect to Marcus, but I think he's 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 given too much license to managers to bring in players of the wrong quality mm. and too many at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a lot of players on loan. We're not a loaning club. No. No. Yeah, we've still got loan players at the club. It's mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. You yes. know, we're not getting loan players, but we've got loan players. Mm-hmm. So we're saying one thing and doing another thing. You know, and you think, well, I think there needs to be new direction from above at the club. And yeah. whoever the owner might be, we need somebody in charge that is strictly giving the football side of the club the direction that it needs to go in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at the moment, it isn't there. No disrespect to Leo Neal. He's learning his job and it's limited in what Lee can do because he can only do what the owner wants him to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So he's, he's doing everything with both hands tied behind his back. Um, but we've just got to wait and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I believe something is on the cards. You know, there's no smoke without fire. I know Marcus yeah. has come out and said this, that, and the other. He's not interested. He's, he is interested. He is keeping five percent. He isn't keeping five percent. They have had land values. They have been in touch with the land registry. They haven't. You, you end up. Who do you believe? Yeah. yeah. You know, so, so you know, many different stories going about as well. Sorry? It's so many different stories going about as well. Like, as yeah. you say, what do you believe? What don't you believe? And things yeah. like that. Yeah, precisely. So you have to make your mind of what you believe and Definitely. what you want to, to wish for. If, if you hope that Marcus is going to be in charge for the, another five seasons, great, fine. You know, is he still going to be giving the direction to the management team? We'll have to wait and see. Or is it the time that he's going to stand aside and let somebody else um, pour money into the big black hole, as they say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, personally, do you have? Do you still have close contact with the club yourself? Um, I still have close contact with some people at the club. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've not been able to go down and watch a game like everybody else for such a long, long time. Um, I still talk to many of the players: Terry, Simon, Milton, George, uh, Walkie, Paul Mariner, uh, Brazil. There's still a lot of the lads about. Yeah. Um, but we don't. Well, we can't get together very often now. We can't even get together on the golf course. Wow. Yeah. Right. Right. I've got a I've got a question for you. Um this is quite a tough question. So like I say, try your best with answering it. But who would feature in your best all time starting eleven you played with? It's a great question. Christ. It's not it's not exactly a two minute job. It's gonna be quite a while, I think. For quality. For quality or yeah, like who you who you played with, like who's the best you played with and you know, just you start eleven. This one will surprise you. All time. John Burridge in goal. Really? <laughs> not not Paul uh, Cooper then? No. no and no. I'll tell you why. All right. Paul Cooper was a better player and a better goalkeeper. Yeah. But John Burridge was a was a character. One oh, day right. during one day during the game, yeah. the crowd has sort of erupted behind me down at the Dell. I turn around and John is sitting on the middle of the crossbar. God, what? What's going on down the end of the pitch? John, John is on the crossbar. Wow. And later on in the game, it's, something else has happened again. And I turn around and he's, he's walking on his hands. He's done a handstand and he's walking across the edge of the 18 yard box. He was a muscle man. He was, he was very well built. He was, he was great. He. <clears throat> He came to my house at Christmas. This will make you laugh. <laughs> we used to train Christmas morning at most of the clubs. So at Southampton, we're training Christmas morning. 
And John's wife had taken the kids away for a few days holiday, leaving John on his own at Christmas. My wife, bless her, said, invite John back for Christmas lunch after training. <laughs> I said, you've got, to, you've got to be mad. <laughs> I said, you must be out of your mind. He, he is, I said, there'll be turkey bones flying all over the place. He'll have gravy all no, no, no. I said, I've got my mum there, my sister there, my sister-in-law's there. And my wife insisted that he came back after training and had Christmas lunch. So I said, okay, on your head, beer. <clears throat> after training, we stopped off at the pub on the way back and had a couple of pints of Guinness. <clears throat> when we got home, my wife said, listen, dinner's not for another half an hour. Have a glass of champagne and a game of charades. So John jumps up, he says, great, I'll go first. Now, if you can imagine that my mum, who at that time must have been about 65, my sister, who was 16, my sister-in-law was about 19, they're all sitting on the sofa. John is standing about four yards in front of them. He jumps up in the air, two yards, can't see my fingers, four words. It's a film. He's standing there. He turns around. So he's got his back to them now. Undoes his jeans. Drops his trousers. Drops his boxer shorts. <laughs> bends over. And pulls the cheeks of his arse apart. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> About nine foot from my mum's nose. Oh, my God. Do you know what the film was oh. called? Anybody got an idea what the film was called? I don't, no. I don't think so, no. I don't. Man in the Moon? The what, sorry? Man in the Moon. Oh, oh. wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Precisely. Quite, quite. So he jumps <laughs> and then his jazz is up and everything like that, you know. Um, wow. And that's the sort of, that's the sort of character that <laughs> I like in gold. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. An absolute lunatic. You know, and I was quite right not to bring him home, but, you know, I got outvoted on that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> you want me to go through a whole team? Yeah. yeah. Why not? If Why you've not? got the time, go for it. Um, Derek Statham at left back. From Southampton. Yeah. Nice. Um, my two centre halves would be Neil Ruddock and Steve Walsh. Neil Ruddock, yeah, good choice. Yeah. And if you two want to go and play, if you want to play against those two, you please yourself. <laughs> I'll, stick, I'll stick the centre back playing myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, best right back. I think the best right back that I played with would be George Burley. Yeah, nice. Yeah. You know, yeah, quick, great delivery, stuff like that. Fantastic yeah. player. Um, but, 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 um, my centre forward will be Mariner. Yeah, nice. Uh, with Alan Brazil, the partnership there. Oof. One target Oof. man, one runner. That's dangerous. So Brazil is a great finisher. Mm. Alan Brazil was the best one on one finisher for going around goalkeepers that I've ever seen in the game. Yeah. Um, he would have the meet and go down, he'd go the other way, make the keeper dive the other way. You know, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. why I'd have him in there. Uh, Brazil was great. Yeah. Um, Brazil was great. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. yeah, good nice. choice. Good choice, yeah. Hell of a player. Unbelievable player. Yeah, very good. Absolutely. If you find yourself with nothing to do for half an hour one day, look at Matt Letizia's selection of goals. Mm. Yeah. On YouTube. I've seen a few before, yeah. Kicks, hasn't he? Yeah. Unbelievable. Three kicks, Absolutely he was really unbelievable. good. Three kicks, long range, short range, headers, dribbles, tappings, everything. Mm. Magnificent mm. player. Um, now, 
<laughs> Left would be Muren. Wow. Yeah, good choice. Mm. And then I've got one slot for attacking midfield player. Gascoigne. Gascoigne. Gobby. Gobby. Wow. <laughs> well, could I have John Burridge and Paul Gascoigne in the same? Oh. Oh. <laughs> what a night out. What a night out that would be. What a night out that would be. <laughs> but John Burridge, when we went on away trips, we would have to stick the, um, the apprentice who used to travel with you as the kit man and help the kit man and stuff like that. We used to have to put the young apprentice in as John's roommate because nobody else would room with him. And the reason for that was because John would sit there all night in front of the TV with his whole kit on. Boots, wow. kids, gloves. Seriously. Wow. And really? Sit on the end of the bed and he'd say to the young apprentice who's watching the TV, he said, any time through the night... It could be anything. He said it could be a, a can, it could be a cup, it could be a piece of fruit. Just throw it across the room in front of me. All right, all right. Wow. And what John would do, as soon as that happened, he would dive and save it. He'd go passing, <laughs> passing off the of walls, off the of wardrobe, off wow. everything. You know. That's crazy. He had to do it three <laughs> times during the night for him, just, just to... He said it was a way he used to keep him sharp and keep yeah. his reflexes alert. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> Man's a loony. Yeah. Sounds crazy. Sounds Sounds crazy he's in your all time start at Evans, so he can't be that much of a loony, can he? <laughs> <laughs> That's he came down, we played in uh, Karlsruhe Siena one year in yeah. uh, East Germany. And the game was in the middle of a, an athletics running track. And when we got there, it was middle of the afternoon. It was about 100 degrees. It was so hot. It was driving. And we were there about half an hour earlier than we needed to be. And to entertain the crowd, there's a gymnastics display going on. So we sat sort of on the, the edge of like the running track. And just on the, the pitch at our side, there was a, uh, a runway, a vaulting box, and then a landing area. And there's about eight or ten Young kids coming running down the runway, off the trampettes, double somersaults, off the vaulting box, you know, and landing on the on the matting and everything. So we're watching that for a while before we go and get changed. And one of the kids has come down, nice somersault and lovely vault. And the next thing we know, the goalkeeper, John Burge, has come running down and done one himself. <laughs> Push the wow. kids out of the way. He's come belting down the track. Off the trampette, double some assault, that uh landed it perfect, gone to the back of the queue, got all the kids out of the way again. He <laughs> did about half a dozen times before the game. Wow. Mm. Entertain the crowd. Lunatic. This guy's a bit of a football comedian then basically, isn't he? On and off the field. Yeah. 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 Mm. He, he, yeah. he tackled me one day on the edge of the centre circle. <laughs> My own goalkeeper. Wow. <laughs> Dear me. We were playing Aston Villa and I was marking um, Alan McAnally, who was playing yeah. centre forward for Aston Villa. Alan McAnally, yeah. And I think their goalkeeper cleared a, cleared a long ball deep into our half and we were pushed up on the halfway line. Me and Alan McAnally turned to sprint after the ball and our goalkeeper wiped both of us out on the edge of the centre stick. <laughs> <laughs> 45 <laughs> yards from his own goal. Wow. <laughs> How many yards? Yeah, so me, and, me and Alan McAnally were on the floor. I couldn't breathe. I thought I broke a couple of ribs. And he's looking <laughs> at me on the floor and he's saying, Russell, he said, he won't be coming out again in the second half. I said, don't bloody think I will be. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Honestly. Oh, Did he come back oh. out in the second half? Alan McAnally <laughs> didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> No. Oh, no. <laughs> you, can, you can speak to wow. him to this day. You, you know, if you ever come across McAnally, just mention that. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Didn't correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Russell, but doesn't right. um, doesn't John Burridge have something to do with the team in the Indian Super League at the minute? Or it did? was it was something the to do with the um, Kerala Blasters coach. That's it. On the end. He worked with uh, Ilko Shitori, um in. In the Middle East, I think, but 
you know, he didn't he didn't make it out to India. I don't think they'd let him in the country. <laughs> <laughs> get through it from the border, did he? No. Um, I have got, I have got a quick, a quick question. Um, it's obviously we spoke about Sir Bobby Robson already, um, yeah. and this is just from me watching. I think it was actually on Paul Gascoigne's interview. Um, he wasn't talking about him as a football manager. He was actually talking about him off the pitch and uh, the kind of character that Sir Bobby Robson was. And he said he. In football, he's never. He, he was that man for him that he was everything to him. Like off the pitch, he was like a, such a genuine man. He was like a really, really good guy. I mean, what 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 is your opinion? Not only with him as a manager and stuff, but actually off the pitch as well. So Bobby set the the standard at Ipswich Town Football Club of how the game should be played and how you should. Um, conduct yourself as a player and I remember many times you know walking around the changing room area g going in where the showers are and the toilets are and then passing Sir Bobby coming out the other way and he'd always go don't forget don't forget to wash your hands son you know and think, yeah I know you're not my dad you're not my mum and everything but <laughs> he was like that you know and mm. He he always wanted your shirt tucked in when you went onto the pitch. That didn't last long. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> down the shut down the you know the tunnel at me. Russell, tuck your shirt in for crying out loud. You know, so yeah, I took it in, and then by the time I got to the halfway line for kickoff, it was out again. Wow. Um, <laughs> but he set that sort of standard, and he he wanted everybody to to conduct themselves a certain way. You know, you're representing the club when you're wearing the shirt. You're employed by the club. So that is the sort of standard that um, they expected you to live up to. Yeah. Mind you, the owners and the chairman, John Cobbold and Patrick Cobbold, old Etonians, ex-guards, um, alcoholics. So <laughs> 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 we lived up to that reputation as well. So, yeah. you know, so... But Sir Bobby was, um, I, I can understand where Paul Gascoigne is coming from because Paul needed somebody to put an arm around him at that time. And, you know, he needed that sort of figurehead to uh, to bring the best, best out of him when he was playing for England. Um, not an easy person to, to manage. Um, but I think Sir Bobby did a, a very good job with him. You know, Paul will always, you know, be grateful for that. It's, it's just sorry to see Paul the way he is these days. Yeah. Yeah. Russell, um, my, my dad came in my room earlier. He's wrote a question down. Um, I know him and my mum my will, will be watching this show right now downstairs. Yeah. They, they want to know, did you have another job when you were a footballer? Because obviously some, some footballers did, didn't they? Yeah, no, I didn't. I was um, no. hundred percent football. No, mm. no. That, it, I mean, footballers these days don't need another job because the money's so good. Mm. Um, I, yeah. I suppose, really, it should have gone into something and uh, established another business whilst I was playing. But um, what I did when I was coming to the end of my playing career you know I started doing a bit of broadcasting work um, and commentary so once I'd finished playing I, like I say I worked for Eurosport for the best part of about 20 years um, and then I worked for the Indian Super League Star Sports for a while I've worked mm. for the BBC ITB blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know so no I was going to actually quickly mention, actually, um, you say you work for the, I think, for the Indi well, it, within broadcast and the Indian Premier League. You've come across uh, Michael Chopra, haven't you? Because I swear Chopra went to the Indian Premier League. Chops played down in uh, Kerala yeah. Blasters. Yeah. 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 Mm. Wow. I was I was working in um, Ipswich Academy the the year Chops came down there. So. Yeah. We had the uh, the talented duo of Michael Chopra and uh, Jimmy Bullard at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> they were good. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Anyway, Russell, we've got I've got a couple more questions before we obviously end the show because I know you've got stuff to do. Um, obviously, lockdown. I want to know how, how have you been coping during the whole pandemic, and I want to know what are you most looking forward to doing after restrictions do lift. Uh, the thing I'm most looking forward to doing is having a game of golf. Oh, I love a bit of golf. To be <laughs> fair. mashing the living yeah. daylights out the first tee shot. Can, can I can I ask where you play? Where else do you play? Because I've got a I've actually got membership for a golf course as well. Have you? Well, I play Woodbridge. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh. So I'm, yeah. I've only just moved back to the area and I was a member of Woodbridge Golf Club back in the late 70s, early 80s when I was a player here. Mm. And I lived in Bristol for the last 30 years and I was a member of Burnham and Barrow Golf Club there, which is a very nice golf club. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Players Club in, in Bristol, another fantastic club. Um, they have some Euro Pro tournaments there, so both very strong golf courses. And, mm. you know, I love Woodbridge. Uh, Play a lot of Hitchcock as well around here, so nice. that's what I'll be looking forward to doing. Come hail, rain, snow, whatever, um, getting back on the golf course will be good. Um, and the rest of the time, it's just the biggest thing I've missed is is just socialising with people. You know, going out yeah. in the evening and going out for dinner, and mm. you know, I moved back to be closer to my family here, my mother, my brothers, my sister, but, you know, that's not been been possible, even to see my mum, who just lives in in the middle of Ipswich, you know, it's like shouting at her from the, the end of the driveway or through the garage door, you know, and um, she's 85 now and she's coped marvellously well, um, and fingers crossed that it just keeps going that way, we're not, we're not at the other side of it yet. Um, I feel sorry for people that, uh, you know, get a fix from going to watch the football. Um, because supporting a football club for some people, it is like a religion. You know, they they are waiting for their fix of football every week, um, not being able to get it, you know. And it's, uh, mm. it's like like a lot of things we're, we're having to do without. Um we just hope it all comes back as quickly as possible, as best yeah, as it can be, you know. But it's got to be, we've got to be very, very careful. We don't want to drop ourselves back into uh, another lockdown, do we? So, mm. you know, we just hope slowly, everybody is sensible in what they're doing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Cool. Russell, thank you so much for your time. We've, it's, been yeah. bril- it's been brilliant. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. My pleasure. Right. We'll let, yeah, we'll let you go, and you know, maybe in the future, we'll have the opportunity to get you on again at some point. Listen, get me on any time you like. You know, absolute pleasure. Thank you. We, we absolute pleasure. That. Thank you. I really do. Sorry about the unbelievable guest. Yeah, no, don't worry. Yeah. Fine class. Thank you. Class. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming on, Russell. It's been you've been a really good guest. Yeah. My pleasure. I've got a few more stories about John Burridge uh, for next time. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, maybe, well, next, get, maybe next time we need to get both of you on. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. As I say, no, also, mate, I'm also, um, Russell as well. <laughs> Russell, <laughs> on, our, on our behalf as football fans for Ipswich, uh, like I say, we all appreciate and thank you for your services for Ipswich Town as well. Because if it weren't for you and all these other players, we wouldn't have won the UEFA Cup. We wouldn't have even been challenging for all these trophies. So, like I say, we really appreciate everything you've done for the football club. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Hang in there no with way. it. It'll all turn good again one day soon. Uh, Definitely, yeah, Russell. Yes, Russell, have a, have a great... Uh, go on. All, all the best to uh, uh, Mariner, Paul Mariner. Hopefully, uh, yeah. you know, okay. all, all the best to yeah. him. I'll pass that on to him, OK? No worries. Thank you. Definitely. Nice. Russell, it. have Thanks, a guys. great weekend, mate. I'll catch up with you soon. Thank you very much. Take care, mate. Bye, mate. What a legend. Wow. Really wow. good. Great 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 guy. Guy. Boys, I, I really, really enjoyed that. That was good. I, I think we're ready for John Burridge and also Russell. <laughs> Boys, they've got to come. On, they've got to come on together, surely. Yeah, yeah. We, well, let's have it. If they're both up for it, he just said he'd come on any time. So maybe I'm thinking, yeah. maybe in the future we could get him on for a, a watch along, an Ipswich game. Yeah. We'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anyway, 
that's it. For, that's it from me, boys. Have you got anything else to say? No, really. yeah, just brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Absolutely class. I know the I know the internet connection was yeah. bad at the start, but I tell you what, we, yeah. we waited for the best, didn't we, to the end? Didn't yeah, we? Yeah, it was worth the wait. Definitely brilliant, worth the wait. Hundred percent. I'm glad he pulled through. I'm glad he pulled yeah. through. And it, the thing is, there's so much more we, we we can ask him as well. That was you know that was a short yeah. you know short, yeah. short conversation. I, we we could have spoke to him for hours. Of yeah. Today. yeah. Um, but yeah, that boys. Any more words? Otherwise, I'm going to no, finish it. Brilliant. I think, no, you know, it's time for tomorrow. Are you backstage? Yeah, tomorrow, boys? tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow we'll be live. Um, but yeah, boys, I'll, I'll, I'll see you backstage. Here. All right. You won't Smithy be there tomorrow. Be uh-huh. I'll talk in a minute. Okay. Cool. Smithy backstage. Coxie backstage. Harvey and Ramondo. Right, people. I love that. That was unreal. Russell Osman. What a guess that was. And I do. I have realised. I spelt his name wrong. Um, Really, really good show tonight. I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you all did. Before you leave this show, I want everyone in here to smash that thumbs up button because I thought tonight's show was really, really good. He went into lots of detail. He told us so many stories that a lot of Ipswich fans probably would have loved to know. Um, So please, please, please smash the thumbs up button. Get your friends to re-watch this because there might have been a lot of people that didn't see this tonight. Um, I know it's Friday and Friday evenings. A lot of people do tend to be busy, but tomorrow... Me and the boys will be live for Ipswich Town versus Plymouth. The big one. If we win tomorrow, we go sixth in the league. We push ourselves up into the playoffs and it's going to be a, a very, very good watch along. We're going to have Ramondo tomorrow, Coxie, Harvey, I believe as well, and Caleb Swan is making a return tomorrow. Smithy is unavailable tomorrow, but don't you worry. It's going to be a great show. We're going to be live from 2.30pm tomorrow. For Ipswich Town versus Plymouth. Now I'm going to end this show here. Thank you so much to everyone who did tune into this stream tonight. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, please keep smashing the thumbs up button. We are so close, by the way, to 14,000 subscribers. So if you could all help me out, get your friends to subscribe, shout me out on your Instagram stories, tag me in your stories, and I'll repost them. Um, but look, we're like 50 away. So if we could hit 14,000 this weekend, honestly, I'd really, really appreciate it. It's been, a, it's been a grind. I've been doing a lot of work on YouTube and it's been really, really hard work. But tonight, what a night. I really, really enjoyed that. He's a, he's a great guy, Russell. And I might, you know, I might be able to get some more contacts for the podcast through Russell. So we'll see. Um, right, I'm going to go. I'm going to say goodbye. I've got my dinner in a minute. Everyone, have a great Friday evening. Set your reminders for tomorrow, 2.30pm. I'm going to be live for Ipswich Town versus Plymouth. Huge, huge stream, okay? I want to see plenty of you in there tomorrow. But for tonight, for now, it's a goodbye from me. Please keep smashing that red subscribe button. Smash the thumbs up button because it's been a brilliant show tonight. Have a great evening. If you want to get in contact with me, by the way, I'm just going to do one more thing before we end it. All of my social medias are on the screen for you. So if you want to contact me or message me, feel free to DM me on Instagram, TikTok, or Twitter. And um, they're also in the description of this video. They are with all my videos. Right. Have a great weekend. I'll see you all tomorrow for Ipswich Town versus Plymouth. Um, yeah. Legends. Russell Osman. Finally. Big thank you to you. And um, yeah. I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>